Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about 10 things I wish I had known when I had started my own photography business at 15. So today I want to discuss different key points of things I wish I would have learned or asked or thought about before I started my own business. Um, just a disclaimer, my cats are probably going to be jumping in the background, so I'm sorry about that. Or if they're loud, I'm not going to edit it out. This is just going to be kind of like a long clip. I don't plan on editing it or anything. So when you're starting out doing photography, um, it's one of those jobs that there are so many people in the field who are so knowledgeable that it is really hard to get into nowadays because it's so oversaturated. I do constantly feel like I talk about this, but it's just the truth. And now it's just it's a lot different. So the first thing I would definitely say is no one is going to take you seriously if you're 15 years old and running your own business. Now, granted, there's different situations where this may not matter as much, but it, it was one of those things that was very hard for me to come over with because whenever I would talk to a client or I would meet them in person or if they didn't really know who I was, when they would meet me, they'd be like, oh, you're really young. And it was just kind of always like an awkward topic. Um, I feel like nowadays versus from when I was 15 to 15 year olds now, sometimes you can't even tell if they're, you know, 15 or 20 or whatever. So, I mean, it's, it's a little bit different now, I guess. But even so, if you're immature or you just don't hold yourself with a um, professional manner, then you might have some hard times trying to run a business at that young of an age. Which, of course, I'm 26 and people are still like, oh, you're so young. So I still get that even now. But I definitely have come a very long way and I handle my business a lot different than I did before. So I definitely could see a, a large difference between then and now. All right, number two is photography is not cheap. So of course you can go get a camera, you could get like a little snap and shoot type camera and call it a day, but at the same time if you're wanting to work for a large client such as editorial work, uh, commercial, anything like that, you're going to need a really nice camera. But of course starting out at 15 years old you're probably just going to be taking pictures of your friends, family, maybe some weddings here and there, engagements, uh, babies senior portraits. That's usually what a lot of younger photographers start out doing unless they just know what they're wanting to do at a young age. Um, mo modeling is actually easier I guess because you could get friends and build your portfolio that way if you think about it in the long run. But it, like again it just depends on what you want to get into. So starting off if you're wanting to do weddings I would still advise getting like one of the lower Canon series. You could probably get them on eBay for very cheap now, I mean probably a couple hundred dollars. Um, I started off with the Canon T1i. I actually am recording on the 6i, but I do photograph with the Canon 5D Mark III and the Mark IV. My main camera is the 4, but my backup is the 3, and sometimes I do shoot video behind it with the 3. The only reason why I have the T6i currently is because I like that I can see myself in the camera. That's the only reason why whenever I take self-portraits, this is definitely the camera. But back to what I was saying. So lighting equipment is so expensive. If you're wanting to shoot with a studio setup, you're looking at several thousand dollars. I started off with the Alien Bees when I was, um, I'm gonna say I ended up ordering them when I was about 17, 18 when I started college because I had shot with uh, not natural light beforehand. But even so, uh, you can get lighting modifiers and things for a lot cheaper but they might break on you a lot quicker. You might be changing bulbs a lot. Eh, some things are more bulky as well. Like compatibility is definitely like just the being able to just get up and go. I shoot with brown color now and we're not going to discuss how expensive those lighting systems are. But if you're a bigger photographer, you definitely know how expensive this <laughs> lighting modifiers are. And I actually finally just got a second light coming in this week, and I'm so excited. I've been shooting on it for about a year and a half now. But I did shoot on Alien Beats for a little while. I kind of retired them, shot natural light, and now I plan on going back and starting over and doing more fashion work and working on my beauty portfolio more, so I do need a second light for those setups. Number three. Okay, this one is a fun one, and I'm going to give you a little story behind it. Okay. Taxes are a thing. Of course, I was paying my taxes. I, w I had my first job at 15. I worked in an ice cream shop for seven years. I worked my way up to assistant manager before I quit. Just kind of a side story. But anyway, 
So when I was, I want to say when I was 19, I was 18 or 19, I ended up getting audited at random. I don't think I was turned in or anything. It was just a very random occurrence. Well, when they went back, of course I was paying my regular taxes, so I was fine with that. But then come to find out, I didn't realize I was supposed to be paying sales tax the whole time. So that is something you need to know as well, is when you're starting out, you also have to figure out if your business needs sales taxes. Um, that actually went back to when I was 15 years old, I think, I want to say it was 15 or 16, and I had to prove a lot of my work was for college or was free and not paid for. And that was really hard going back three years and having to prove that I didn't get paid for something. Uh, I had to get all my bank statements if it even went back that far. I don't even think I had a bank account that early. I'm not even sure. I really don't even remember. But it was just a big hassle. Luckily, I did I did end up owing in a little bit of money, but I promise you it could have been a lot more had I not been careful and not paid attention. Number four, people will try to get anything free out of you if they can. Again, this is kind of going back to the you know, no one's going to take you seriously kind of thing. People are going to constantly think that your work is for your portfolio. I still even get people trying to do this to me now, and I've been shooting for over 10, 11 years, and I've been in several local magazines and that kind of thing. Um, and people still try to ask me if they can be in my portfolio or if I need free work or anything like that. Uh, it's going to be a lot worse for you when you're starting out, especially if you're that young. People are going to think you're a pushover, which, honestly, being 15, I, w I mean, I'm going to be honest. Like, I was really, like, sweet back then, and, and I was a bit of a pushover. Like, when people would say something, I wouldn't want to make them mad. So, of course, I'd be like, sure. And then, you know, I'd be photographing something I didn't want to do. There was a couple instances I ended up having to, like, delete people because I ended up doing some stuff for free and got used and it was just really bad and that happened to me so many times that I just I ended up putting my foot down and again this is kind of a growing thing this is with age of course you might want some free shoots at first you're gonna need them for your portfolio and to prove yourself you know you might shoot a couple free weddings but you're gonna learn really fast that weddings are extremely tedious they're very long very time-consuming and I would definitely advise becoming a second shooter first. I actually never have second shot for anybody. I just went in full-fledged and just went with it. Uh, weddings are something that I do, but I, my main thing is more so like commercial editorial work, stuff like that. So that's just kind of my second kind of like backup thing that I do on the weekends. If I'm not working, I just do that. So I would definitely say have a, a pretty good backbone whenever it comes to this. If there's something you don't want to do, just be like, hey, that's not my style. Hey, I don't shoot that kind of stuff. You know, you might be, I don't know, you might photograph seniors. You know, you might want to photograph your friends and, and build your portfolio with that. Someone might want you to photograph their newborn. And newborns are really hard as well. I personally, I shoot them, but more so I only shoot them for friends because they're very hard to do. And they're very tedious. They're, I think, honestly, a newborn session scare me more than a wedding. And it's literally a fraction of the time. Number five is a good one. Contracts. It kind of ties into this, you know, learning how to say no and that kind of thing. But contracts are going to save you so much grief. And this being from experience, I've been shooting for 10 years and I still find myself revising my contracts. It is definitely a learning curve if you don't talk to a lawyer, but I would definitely say if you if you have any friends or you you know have the money to pay somebody to you know help you out, I would have somebody look over your contracts because you're always going to find certain things here and there where you're going to just tweak your contracts. Um, just a couple little instances, I've had people withhold money and refuse to pay me. Uh, I've had. Uh, weddings where I worked for 12 hours and didn't get a break to eat. I mean, there's just several different little things here and there that you're not going to realize you definitely want to put in those contracts. But this mainly to, to protect you and to protect the client. 
Um, just as much as you want it to protect you, you need to also look out for your client as well and make sure that you have their best interests as well. Um, in my contracts, I do hold myself accountable for several things as well. So you don't want it to be one-sided. I actually have even heard that there are some clients who will make you sign a contract for them as well. And I definitely, that's why I try to meet down the middle and I try to take care of their end as well on my contract so that way you know, I'm good, they're good, we're in an agreement, they read it, and I'm not even going to lie to you. My biggest thing is people do not look at their turnaround times. Turnaround time is going to be <clears throat> such a big thing because now I'm so busy that it's hard for me sometimes to get a wedding in less than a month. You know, I have in my contract, it takes 6 to 12 weeks for you to get your wedding back. Of course, you want to have their shoots to them as soon as possible. If I don't have anything going on, you know, they're going to get their weddings back a lot sooner. But if I'm booked up the entire month, I may not have time to sit down and edit 6,000 pictures in, you know, two weeks. It's going to take me a little bit longer, especially if other um, sessions have done rush orders. If I have a couple editorials that, you know, have really strict deadlines, those are going to be things that you want to take into consideration in your contracts as well. Number six, people will not always have your best interests at heart. This one is a really tough pill to swallow, but you're going to have people who befriend you to, and just to use you. Um, there's going to be people who want to be your friends just so that you will take pictures of them for free. There's people who are going to want to be your best friends so that they can rummage through your photography equipment. I've had both of these scenarios happen before. Uh, it's just, you know, you might... You might find somebody you want to watch and, and kind of, you know, learn under. They may not, you know, see that eye to eye. They might, you know, feel like you owe them something. You never know. I mean, there's just so many, you know, scenarios. But it's just one of those things that when you start out at such a young age, kind of going back to people, you know, they're going to, they can use you. They definitely will try to get anything out of you that they can. And they're just, they're not going to have your best interest at heart. So just make sure that you have somebody, I mean maybe a parent or just uh, someone who ha can give you guidance so you know that you're in the right direction, you're not getting used or hurt in the long run and that you're able to kind of focus on being a business person because you're so young that you're having, that you haven't established that mature role yet to learn how to handle a business type situation I guess is what I'm trying to say. So just make sure that you um, always do everything with a kind heart and, and do everything, you know, right on your end, but also don't let people hurt you or push you around. Seven, you will always be reading, learning, and educating yourself even after you get out of college. Of course, I feel like everyone should know this. You're, you know, as soon as you get out of school, which when you're 15, I guess you don't really think of this, but, you know, you think you're out of college and that it's over with. You're done, you, you know everything you need to know, and you're just ready. No, that is definitely not the case. I find myself researching literally every day. I'm YouTubing, I'm watching behind the scenes videos, I'm looking at light modifiers, how uh, new cameras that are coming out are gonna work, just so many different things and I'm constantly buying books as far as like business goes because the thing is, yes, I'm a creative, but I also need to learn the business aspect. No, I did not go to school for business, so I had to teach that to myself. You know, and it might help for you to go to school for business if you want to be a creative so that you have those, you know, both ends of that. But some people don't or some people don't want to go to school at all. And so it's definitely good for you to find where your, you know, weak points are and get books and educate yourself. Again, YouTube is such a phenomenal place to look up, you know, resources. If you're a visual person like I am, sometimes sitting and reading a book may not help you. So maybe find like a podcast or your favorite YouTuber and just look them up and watch them and get some new knowledge for something you didn't know that you needed to know. Number eight, focus less on money and more on your passion. So when I was 15, I actually started my first job, which I ended up holding for seven years on and off. Um, on and off only because the particular location I worked at closed down. Ended up, you know, kind of taking a little bit of a break and then ended up going back. So, I was so focused on being young and wanting to pay for everything on my own, which is not a bad thing. 
it's not. My parents never had to pay for my camera, my vehicles, my lighting equipment, everything that I have since I was 15, pretty much I've paid for. I've worked really hard for, whether it be my photography money or with my um, regular income money for my, my full-time job. But sometimes, now that I reflect back, I wish I would have really just slowed it down and not been so focused on making money out of shoots and focusing more on what I wanted to shoot. When I started out wanting to do photography, I, um, I wanted to be a, a concert photographer. I wanted to photograph bands. I love looking at, you know, like Vans Warped Tour posters and different magazines and just looking at these awesome lighting, you know, this, this different lighting and wardrobes and I just love that kind of stuff, which is actually where I ended up wanting to do fashion and editorial work because I loved how detailed everything was. But it's just one of those things I wish I would have really considered making those connections in that field more than just trying to book weddings and book senior portraits, you know. I mean, I love doing that stuff. But my passion is definitely somewhere else, and I feel like I could be more in that industry had I just kind of sat back, calmed down, and just not rushed it. Number nine, if you plan on doing this for long term, make sure that you are on time, you are courteous, and that you realize that this business that you are building is a reflection of yourself. Things that you do in your personal life will come back to haunt your business. This is kind of a double-edged sword because, I mean, it's not necessarily like any key points in my life that have, you know, reflected on this. It's just something that I've learned as an adult that if you have a disagreement with somebody, you can't just go post it on Facebook or, or go out this person because all of this negativity is also going to negatively affect your business. So definitely take that into consideration of be careful of who you meet and how you treat them. You could meet a celebrity on the street and not realize they're famous and get in an altercation with them and they find out what your business is and you're just ruined for life. I don't know. There's so many scenarios and situations but being 15, being so young and starting a business, there's so many things between 15 and 21, dumb mistakes and crazy things you can do and if you are a business, definitely just watch yourself with that because you don't want to crash and burn before you start. And number 10 kind of goes back with what I said earlier, work at your own pace and work with what you have. Something that's been hard for me is I have not wanted to do, I've wanted to do YouTube so badly that I push it off because it's just not right. I don't have the lighting I feel, I don't have the, the location to the studios to, you know, shoot this amazing you know, video, portraiture, you know, yada yada. And it's just one of those things that if you just keep pushing it off, you're never going to do it. If you keep saying, you know, I don't have that camera, I can't produce that work, you never will because you're not working with what you have. It's kind of one of those things like if you start off with a penny and then, you know, you trade it off for a, a bobby pin or something and you just keep going until you own a house. You know, that's, that's a thing, I guess. <laughs> I've seen videos on YouTube. But anyway, um, it's just one of those things that you have to reinvest your money. So you have to start working with what you have. So if you have a point-and-shoot camera that you got for 50 bucks at Walmart, yes, it's terrible probably. Or even if you have your phone, okay? You might even have your phone. Now, I'm not saying it's like little Nokia flip phone because that won't work. But iPhones even. I mean, there's people who are far richer than I am who have less, you know, equipment than I have, okay? It's just the truth. It's it's sad, but it's just the truth. So just work with what you have and learn how to alter it. I mean, you may live in a trailer, but you know what? Throw up a, a decent backdrop, have a little bit of natural light to the side, take a picture, learn how to warp it, you know, style your model. I mean, I have seen some phenomenal work with just very little. If Man, I'll just I'll make a video one day of YouTubers who are just phenomenal with working with little things. Like it's just crazy. But just remember I feel like remember that if you're starting a business so young, you have so much life ahead of you. 
I'm like I said I'm 26 so I've been shooting for like 11 years and there's sometimes I feel like I'm old and I feel like that I'm at the end of my career or that I'm never going to get any better and then I find new things that make me realize I am young and I still have so much ahead of me if this is what I continue to want to do so don't just you know do something and just give up because you're 15, 16, 17, whatever, and starting a business or wanting to start a business. I didn't even become an actual LLC until last year. So that LLC behind my name, I feel like it just really helped me too because it's official. And when you look at my name in a magazine or something, it's just like, oh, she is legit. And just that little thing, you know, behind my name just really made me feel so much more confident. I feel like because I am so young I still get people who act like I don't know what I'm doing and now I'm to the point I just kind of laugh in their face because I've actually had interviews with people who talk to me like I don't know what I'm doing when I have probably 20 different magazines that have my work in it or on top of the cover and I have so many weddings. I may not be the most amazing wedding photographer, but I can get the key points and I can deliver it and I can have an amazing day with you. So just, you know, kind of reflect back, think about what you want to do and if photography or, you know, any other business is what you want to do at a young age, go ahead and go for it. Just think about these key points before you get into it. And again, I apologize for my cats because they are just rough housing. <laughs> But you guys don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video.